For the first time, a Chesapeake Navy veteran is talking about the horrific crash that claimed his wife's life and nearly killed him and his son, too. I'm Jessica Larche, and this Christmas marks the fifth that Lewis Scott will spend without the love of his life. I met him earlier this year at a Virginia Beach air show, and he talked endlessly about how still in love he was with his wife and how deeply it crushed him when she was killed. As he shares with me in this exclusive interview, he wants greater accountability for what happened to her, and he's finding a way for her legacy to live on. I'll always love her, always. I've never felt a love as deep as the love I had for my wife, never. Lewis Scott is still in love. Tell me about Debbie. Oh my gosh. She was the most selfless person. Deborah and Lewis met in their hometown in Georgia in the 80s. And I just knew that she would be my wife one day. I just knew it. His career in the Navy would bring them to Hampton Roads, where their family would grow. And after more than 30 years together, as they were preparing for the retirement chapter of their lives. This semi-truck crossed the meter into oncoming traffic. November 9th, 2019. Scott was driving with his wife and son in the car, heading south on I-95 in Florence, South Carolina. They were all wearing seatbelts. Records from the South Carolina Highway Patrol reveal the driver of a semi-truck heading northbound on the other side of the interstate crashed through the guardrails, crossed the median, and into oncoming traffic. The impact sent one car over a bridge, killing two people from Richland, Virginia. The other car carrying the Scott family from Chesapeake was crushed beyond recognition. I was yelling and screaming for my son and my wife. And it was like being in a sci-fi movie where everything is just slowed down and you're in a fog. He heard his son breathe. He would survive. But the love of his life died instantly. As he was pulling me out, that's when I saw her. Even though here, I know there was nothing I could do. Tell it to the heart. Because uh, as a husband, I'm not supposed to protect my wife. It was hard for me. Mr. Scott says what's made this even harder is a lack of what he calls meaningful accountability for the crash that took his wife's life. Now, I went through records from South Carolina, and they show the North Carolina-based driver who caused the crash and survived was charged with driving on the wrong side of the road and issued a fine. I also went through these investigative records from South Carolina Highway Patrol, and there is no indication in these records that the driver was impaired or under the influence. In fact, records show he told police he had no memory of the crash whatsoever. There needs to be some kind of accountability for what happened. I mean, three people lost their lives. Families have been impacted by this. While Scott considers his legal options for accountability. This is uh, my wife's diary. He's been finding solace in his wife's words written long before their love story took a tragic turn. What does this line say? It says, Dear Diary, being in love is a great feeling. A feeling he wants to live forever through a college scholarship fund he's raising money for to build in her honor. I'll never get over losing my wife. Never. All I can do now is to try to keep her memory alive with the scholarship. As long as I'm here, I just want to do good. And I just want to help as many people as I can help just like I know she would have. As Mr. Scott builds that scholarship fund, there are ways you can help. I've included how you can do that inside this story at WTKR.com. Jessica Larche, News 3.